Hi guys, thanks for joining me again for another video. Uh, I was recording or not recording myself earlier and I spent about a good 10 minutes on a video that I thought that I was making, but I wasn't recording it at all. So I am very upset about it, but here I go again to try and remember, recall what I just said. But um, um, today's video, today's video is about um, mercenaries what a mercenary is what a mercenary is now typically a mercenary just from watching movies is known as a person um someone who has substandard ethics um morals belief system um who is hired by a private or secret faction of a government agency, military unit, army, navy, air force, marines to go in and to uh, take over a region or to obtain something materially um, for money. Okay. They go in um, and they are basically paid to do whatever they need to do to get the job done, whether it's to kill or to harm or endanger or violate. Um, it really doesn't matter. As long as um, they get the job done, they will get that money. Okay. So that is the uh, typical definition of a mercenary. But a mercenary is also defined as a person who is only concerned with material material reward at the expense of ethics. Okay, um, as an adjective, it says of a person or their behavior, primarily concerned with making money at the expense of ethics. Um, more uh, money oriented, grasping, greedy, acquisitive, um, avaricious, covetous, these are some synonyms. Okay. Um, very materialistic. Okay. So when we put it into those terms, into those, that context, um, we see that that could apply to a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of greedy, money hungry people who will basically do anything for money because as the Bible says, it is for the love of money, the love of money, which is the root of all evil. So these people with corruptible minds and uh, covetous ways will pretty much do as they're told as long as they're getting paid well for it. So that, of course, triples into our entire society. So, of course, the main two, government and private industry, um, as well as the medical field. How many things, how many, uh, what's the word? How many demands, I guess, how many demands and mandates and forced upon ideologies and uh, just way of life that has continued over the past two years um, where people are being either forced to get a vaccine because of a mandate or forced to leave their jobs or to quit their jobs or else they'll get fired anyways. Um, and, and it dawned on me, I said, well, okay, normally people, they, they will do whatever to get ahead anyways, because it's a cutthroat world. Um, people will step on whoever they need to step on to get ahead, to do, to get theirs. Okay. That is unfortunately the mindset of America under this capitalist society or capitalist economy. But for those people who don't who don't walk away um who obviously these people the frontliners the people who said i am not going to be forced to get a vaccine you know i 
this is basically just another way for the government to take over our freedoms, our rights. Okay, so we know that there are doctors and nurses and teachers and lots of people in the private industry um, and the you know state government, federal government, who have quit their jobs because of the mandates. Yes, and good for them. But like with any entity, okay, they say, well, um, if we can't get you to do it, we're going to get other people to come in to do it. And they'll do it for money. So we're going to hire them. So when they offer you jobs, when they offer you the job and you take money for that job, then you have become one of them because now they, because now they rule over you. They get to tell you and dictate what you do, say, and carry out. And you will say, well, it's my job. And so it's making us complicit. If you are partaking and you are doing business as usual, even though it may morally, ethically be wrong, then you are complicit. Complicit. If you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. But people just don't see it that way. And so it's nothing personal. It's my job. This is my job I have to do. And the more jobs that are being offered under this new system of people just doing as they're told, whether it's gunning down people, okay, murdering people, Yeah, you may think of people in the media, people who, people who are supposed to get the news and get the truth and the heart of the matter, who today um, only have a cookie cutter way of presenting the news. Everyone repeats the same story again and again. They don't even change the words. They get the same news from the same source, the Associated Press, and they just repeat the same narratives. They paint a picture for you. It's, it's like a Hollywood production, really, to instill fear, anger, hysteria, chaos, division. And it's their job to do that. The propaganda. And that's their livelihood. That's their job to bring you the quote unquote news, which may or may not be factual information. But they're getting paid to do that. And so they do it. And they don't feel bad about it at all. putting people in harm's way, um, and yet that's your job. That's your job. And honestly, that is why a lot of military people have a lot of PTSD when they return because they did their jobs, but morally. It's that moral fiber, the heart, their conscience. Their conscience says otherwise because they know that even though it was their job to carry out and perform these things and, and what they saw and what they were ordered, ordered to do, that still doesn't sit well with their, with their conscience because that is our God nature. That's our soul. 
So when something is affecting you in your soul, that's, yeah, that's going to cause a lot of mental, psychological, emotional dra- um, trauma, trauma. And so that is their trick. They, they say, well, we have jobs. They're right here. Take as many as you want. Yeah, but once you are hired here, then you're one of us now. You become one of us. You are now working for us and with us. And I am not telling anyone who has had the vaccinations and who's in a government job to quit their job. Okay, that is your livelihood. But there has to come a point. I guess the question of the day that I want to leave you all with or anyone with is how much is too much? And how far are you willing to go with this? How much more will it take? How many more mandates before enough is enough? Or will you just continue on? And those who are Christians, it doesn't take any stretch of the imagination to know what we are seeing right now, what the signs of the times are. If you cannot work, if you are forced from your job, your livelihood, you cannot travel, you cannot do certain things unless you have a vaccination, and this is worldwide, that the mark of the beast, you, he cannot buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast. So how, how much will it take? When is enough going to be enough? Because they want to make it so that everything is going to be this or that. And they're upping their ante on what that is. Very dire times. These very strange and perilous times that we are living in. Well, I'm going to end the video here, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. And I will be back very soon, God willing. Thanks again for joining. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please leave a comment below. Well, again, thank you and have a blessed day. I will hopefully see you very soon. Take care.